Well, hustle is sort of a buzzword right now. If you read or listen to a lot of podcasts or business, all that sort of stuff, everyone's talking about hustle. You got to hustle. Hustle is good. Um, but if you're not hustling intentionally, if you're not hustling with, with, uh, a goal in mind, if you're not going after a specific purpose, you're sort of hustling for nothing and you're spinning your wheels and being busy is not awesome. Uh, being busy actually sucks. Hey, this is Braden Flynn, host of The Artist Report with a taping of February's Connecting Things Gathering. Connecting Things is a once a month speaker series where we have makers, artists, and business owners who go deep with their process strategies and talk through what it's taken them to get to where they are today. The speaker of this one was actually me. I talked through how to structure your business as an artist or freelancer so you're able to be profitable and stay creative. I'm a photographer, I've obviously run the artist report, interview a lot of amazing creatives and just sharing a lot of what I've been, conversations I've been having with people. So hope you learned something that you can apply to your own business or art. Um, I'm, a fa- I'm a husband of three beautiful kids. I've got an amazing wife who is watching those three kids right now. Um, I'm a son of an entrepreneur. My old man's in the back right there with three dogs. Funny looking guy. Um, but he uh, inspired a lot of who I am, just the way that he was driven and how, the way that he worked. And so it's sort of one of those things that's ingrained in me. Um, went to school for business at a little school called USC, um, Los Angeles. And um, then I got into photography and cons again from my old man. He was a drummer and brought me to shows as a young kid. And I just has been something ingrained in me. I started shooting bands. Um, and then that led, and that's a whole other story of just how I got into my business mind of taking, um, I would find bands that I wanted to shoot. And then I would go find a magazine and say, hey, listen, this band's coming to town. I'm shooting them. Do you want to cover them? And they say, yeah, of course. And then I would contact, I would figure out who represented the band. And then I would say, hey, I'm shooting for this magazine. Would love to cover your band. And then they would set me up with a free pass. And you know, I'd either be on stage or against the stage. So I got to go to all of my favorite bands for free. And I was either on stage or against the stage. And it was amazing. Um, and I've made a lot of friends that way. And it's just one of those things that I was really passionate about. And then that passion has now led to where I am now, where um, I shoot, I photograph. I still photograph mostly for friends because with three kids, it's hard to wake up early after being out till 2 a.m. shooting a band. Um, but I shoot weddings and that is, and I still shoot lifestyle and clothing companies, but weddings is primarily what I do. And I shoot a really high end destination wedding and I feel really lucky that I get to do that. And I travel all over, all over the world um, and work with some of the best people in the industry, um, which is really fun. And then I run, um, and this is sort of a side project that I've been doing, which is just out of my curiosity for how people work. And I love hearing stories of success and really what it takes to be an artist. Um, I feel like a lot of people are talented, but then there's this other side of taking that talent and actually making it into some sort of business and making your livelihood from it. And that's, that, those are two different skill sets, and some people blend those really well, and I love hearing those stories. And so that's what I do on the Artist Report, which is just video interviews, and then all of these connecting things talks get up there too. Um, love for you to check that out, and there's, it's a fun resource. What I was going to say is what, what I've been um, just recognizing to this idea of being a freelancer is there's, there's just these common themes of what it takes to be successful, and then there's also common themes themes of struggles that we all have. Um, and so I just wanted to touch on some of those things. And, and an initial thought is what, what actually is it? Like, how do you define success? Um, and what is that to you? Because I spent a lot of time never actually defining that and I'm still trying to define it. Um, and, and what happens is when you don't define that, basically um, you are aiming for something that it's really hard to, it's like setting a goal. If you're trying to aim for something and you haven't really set what that thing is that you're aiming for, how are you ever gonna hit it? Um, and then on the flip side of that is is actually learning to celebrate successes. Um, and that's something that I wasn't doing either. And um, some of my employees that I've had, have, I'm sure just thought I was a total ass because it's like when when is enough enough because it was always this drive for more and always this drive for something bigger and never actually like being excited about something like what we've accomplished and what we've done and that's that's a huge exercise this last year that I've been trying to teach myself is actually celebrating little successes but you know it's like there's always and I think the world of Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all that fun stuff is made life challenging and this made us feel a lot less than um, one of my favorite quotes is we compare our insides to everybody else's outsides you know and then the Instagram outside is something a, a whole different animal because um, Instagram is always pretty you know it's like <laughs> my marriage is great my kids are great um, I'm super successful and look at how good I am um, you know and that's what we're watching everybody else doing and how easy it is to sort of get caught up in that and, and beat yourself up about that. Um, but, 
Yeah. Oh, and I mean, there's and there's always going to be someone with a bigger following. You finally hit that 10k, and then there's someone. You know, everyone else has 20k, and then you've got the, once you get to that level, then there's the 50ks, and there's the 100. It's like there's always someone better than you, um, or there's always someone that appears better than you, and that's that's something that you just can't really get caught up in um, because it will never be enough. Um, so figure out like I would I would challenge you if you haven't done that like really sit down and be like why am I doing what I'm doing what am I actually trying to attain what am I actually trying to do you know and it's, you, because if you don't do that you could actually miss like this I just interviewed the hood girls um, yesterday you know and, and that was something we talked about um, and it's like if you, if you don't it's, it's just work you know it's like sure we get to do a fun sort of work um, I'm photographing a conference this week and it's for medical sales devices amazing company but I, I was actually sitting there um, yesterday morning and I was like oh man that's this this is awesome what I get to do um, and and the fact that we get to sit back and think like pursue your passion and pursue your dreams like w most everybody here is doing that or wanting to do that and that's that's incredible um, and so being able to think about that and, and be appreciative of that so uh, that goes on to this little video here ever heard of this man named Adam Sandler <laughs> love to eat turkey <laughs> Love to eat turkey. <laughs> Love to eat turkey, cause it's good. Love to eat the turkey like a good boy should. Cause it's turkey to eat, so good. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the Adam Sandler song? It's amazing. Um, the Adam Sandler song is amazing. But basically, I was just trying to look for a funny video about being thankful. Um, because that, that is something like attitude, gratitude, having that um, perspective it really changes everything. Because if you're going from an attitude of like, I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, I haven't accomplished enough, um, I mean, you're never ever gonna love what you're doing. And you are doing what you love what you're doing. Does that make sense? Um, you know, it's like, that's the thing. It's like, if you actually can think about that and be like, I get to do what I do. I get to draw for a living. I get to take pictures for a living. Um, I get to hang out with people in exotic places for a living. And it's like, if you don't remember that stuff, you're kidding yourself and and it's basically you're hurting yourself and it's never going to be fun and then you're actually not living your dreams you've just created another another job for yourself that's actually way more work than going to work for somebody else because um, running a business yourself is not easy personal projects this is another theme that has come up a lot in the talks that i've been giving wow in the interviews that i've been giving um and also like i went back through a lot of the connecting things talks um and how much personal projects have led to um, actual success. And a lot of times you're not doing personal projects so that you get these big jobs, but personal projects is, if you are only doing the work you get hired for, you're going to burn out, um, you're going to fade out, and you're gonna, you're gonna get stale and stagnant. And then, I mean, on another side, like there's always someone younger and hungrier and probably half of them are in this room right now. Um, but, but this idea of personal projects, are you doing anything that is outside of the stuff you're getting hired for. Um, and, and in that stuff that you're doing, that is the stuff that is going to be getting you the jobs that you want to get. You know, and so there's that question. It's like, how do I start getting like this sort of job? It's like, you have to start, you have to self-assign. Um, I have, uh, Natalie was interning for me last uh, semester. And, you know, now that she's out of school, I've been challenging her to, you've got to self-assign. Like now that you don't have a teacher giving you assignments, um, you have to assign something for yourself or else it's not going to happen. If you don't give yourself a deadline on a project, you're not going to do it. That, that's a huge thing. And I, I really challenge you to think through like, am, am I actually getting the work that I want to be getting? Am I actually booking the work that I want to book um, and taking on the jobs that I want to take on? And if no is the answer to that, figure out what it is that you want to be doing um, and then actually challenge yourself, create a project that is in that direction. And, and it's something you're not getting paid for, but it's something that gives you a little bit of life. And eventually, if you keep doing that, if you get, get yourself to do something a little bit more original than what the next guy is doing, it is going to get you that work. It will. Um, people will notice that. And it's like, that's the stuff that gets you alive. So do that. Don't do something that you think somebody else wants to see. Do something that you want to see. And then that is going to be your unique voice. And that's how you develop your voice is like, keep doing that. And it might be something way off the wall. And it might be something that no Nobody, it's not a trip to Iceland or in Portland on Instagram. You know, it's like that might be a little popular with small people in the frames. 
do something different and keep doing that, you know? And, and with that, it's like that will be your voice and that'll be the thing that sets you apart. I mean, this is an incredibly saturated world. Um, how the barriers to entry to now being an illustrator, it's like all you gotta do is hand draw something and post it on Instagram, all of a sudden you develop a following and you're, you're an illustrator. Same, you know, you get a camera, get an iPhone, it's like you now have a following, now you're a photographer. The barriers to entry are so low um, that you have to do something to set yourself apart because it's a crazy saturated industry. This is another big one. Um, so I, I heard this, I read a lot of books. Um, that's another thing I would challenge you to do. If you are not feeding yourself somehow, um, growing, learning, doing something outside of your industry, learning in something outside of your industry, I'm generally reading about three books simultaneously, which is, leads into my ADD perspective, personality. But um, I'm constantly reading books and it's always challenging me to think and I'm, I'm just, I like the business side of things. Um, but uh, there's a book called, um, oh, come on. It's Louder Than Words, thank you. Um, Louder Than Words, Find Your Unique Voice. Um, and he gives this example and I was like, oh, this really hit home for me because I grew up surfing and it's um, just a language that I speak. But um, as a surfer, he basically these tourists that were out on the trip and um, they were watching these surfers that were surfing for hours and hours and they, were, they had gone surfing like the last couple of days and they, they couldn't move because they're so tired. And their instructor basically looked at him and said, hey, listen, here's, here's what happens is someone who knows how to surf, they're not scrapping for every wave that comes by because half the waves look like they're gonna be waves and they keep paddling for them, they paddle hard and then they get tired and they do that for the next one, they actually miss the set and they get slammed on the head and they're not catching the waves that they wanna catch. And then also the guys who are really good, they're, you know, surf contests. If you, basically, if you're out in the water and there's guys who are really good, they know the wave, they're always, they always get the wave somehow. So they know the spot to be, the place to get it and they're selective with the waves that they catch how that relates to business, as a metaphor, um, is the jobs that you take. I think when you're young in whatever you're starting as a business, not young in age, but young in whatever you're doing as your craft, um, you take whatever work comes your way. And, and to a degree, that's good. Um, I, would really, I would really challenge you to not do that. Um, take as much work as you can, but only take the work that fits what you wanna be doing. Um, cause too often we take jobs and again, you've got to make money and so maybe you're taking those jobs instead of working at a restaurant and those pay your bills. Um, but then I'll challenge you to do your personal projects, but really be selective with the work that you take because that, those are the jobs, the work that you're doing is the work you're going to get. The work that you put out there is the work you're going to attract. Um, so if the clients that you're taking on, if, if that's not the stuff that you really like doing, don't keep doing that because here's the deal is if once you get to this place where you're wanting to book bigger clients, you're wanting to book bigger jobs, you're wanting to book the jobs that give you life, if you are taking everything that comes your way and it's not going the way that you want it to go, you're going to be so, um, so much on your plate that you basically won't have the capacity to take on the jobs when they come your way. Or you won't be able to serve those clients the way that they need to be served because you're too busy, you're too exhausted, you're too overwhelmed to actually take care of the clients the way that they need to be taken care of. Because when you're working at a higher end and a higher level, they need to be pampered, they need to be handheld, they need to feel like they are your number one priority, even though you've got a lot of other stuff going on. Um, and so that's that's something that if you, if you don't have that space and capacity, or the other deal, I mean, in the wedding industry, it's extremely tough because once I book a Saturday, that Saturday's gone and I can't take another gig. So if I'm saying yes to all these small, low-end jobs because I'm, I'm, I'm scared or, you know, it's, it's scary to like, am I going to book enough? Am I going to have enough? Um, am I going to be able to support my family? Um, all that sort of stuff. So, but if I take all those jobs, which I know I shouldn't be taking, all of a sudden um, that amazing wedding planner is going to come along and feed me this who I've been wanting to work with for a long time and they've got this huge amazing destination wedding that's all weekend and I took that one gig for three thousand dollars that's going to put me in a place that um, I, I then have to say no oh sorry I'm already booked and I and I, I'm not saying I'm perfect at this it's it's really it's scary um, it's scary to say no to work um, but it's it's something that is so crucial if you ever want to get out of maybe a rut that you're in or the position that you're position that you're in or if you ever want to start booking higher end clients you have to start saying no so you have the space and you have the just ability to take it on let's do the next one ever heard of these guys oh, I get Uh, so basically get by with a little help from our friends. Um, this is an amazing community. 
Um, my shirt's coming unbuttoned. Um, the, uh, yeah, you know. Um, with friends, like, we need our community. We need, like, this, everything is about who you know, who you work with, who you like working with. Friends refer friends. People only want to work with people they know and they trust. So build those relationships. Um, there, that's one thing on just like getting the jobs that you like. It's the clients who then feed you the jobs. But then also there's this whole other side of collaboration and working with people and working with friends. Like there's, we have a crazy talented set of people here in Orange County, um, which is why we ultimately wanted to start connecting things, uh, because because everyone feels like, oh, you got to be in LA or New York or all these other cool places. I mean, Costa Mesa is pretty cool, uh, but but there's an amazing set of people that are so talented around us and collaborate. Like, don't do it on your own. I think it's. I mean, I, I was just in another interview with someone, and basically I said, I'm I'm so sick of myself. I'm so sick of doing projects on my own because it's it's not fun. You're always in your own head. Um, you limit yourself. But if you are able, like, and I would also say, if you are just at a starting out phase, find someone. Um, I just interviewed Josh Ritchie, and he was talking about this. He has three part business partners for column five. And with that, he's like, if you have these different skill sets, combine forces with someone who has a little bit different wiring than you. Maybe you're a little introverted. Find that extrovert that's going to bring in the business, and then you just do the art. Do it as a team, and you might have to make twice as much to you know support yourselves, but man, it'll be a lot more fun, and you I think there's a huge advantage of having a team. Uh, so that's what I would say about that. Um, use this community. Get don't just show up, listen to a talk, and go home. Meet people, make friends. If you don't have like if you don't have a community of other like-minded, talented friends, meet them here. There's, I'm sure some of you here are looking for a, a, a deeper community with other artists, but meet each other, work with each other, refer each other jobs, have fun with each other, you know, all that fun stuff. Um, hustle. Hustle is another part of it. Um, go for it. Basically, without hustle, you're going to get nowhere. Um, hustle is greater than talent, I would say. There's a lot of really talented people that get nowhere um, because maybe they're lazy or they're like, oh, you know, this art's just for me, uh, all that sort of stuff. But Gary Vayner, uh, Vaynerchuk, he is a business speaker, amazing guy. He's got a bunch of books out there. He says hustle is putting all your effort in achieving your goal at hand. So, and I think hustle, hustle is sort of a buzzword right now if you read or listen to a lot of podcasts or business, all that sort of stuff. Everyone's talking about hustle, you gotta hustle. Hustle is good. Um, but if you're not hustling intentionally, if you're not hustling with with uh, a goal in mind, if you're not going after a specific purpose, you're sort of hustling for nothing and you're spinning your wheels. And being busy is not awesome. Uh, being busy actually sucks. And and busy doesn't mean you're actually getting anything done. So being hustling, I think it's and and th we live in a day and age where we have more resources than we could ever have and er at our fingertips in terms of productivity and the tools we have on the internet or the books you can read to figure out how to be more productive because as artists some of us um, are not exactly organized some of us are not exactly streamlined some of us need people and I've had to hire people to I've had to hire office managers and people because that's not my strength but it's also something that just because I'm not wired that way I've had to force myself to learn habits and force myself to become organized and structured because I feel like art uh, I, I was, another thing that I was reading is basically art is a product of structure and habit um, or creativity is a product of structure and habit because if you're just waiting for creativity to like blow into your mind so you can come up with this amazing thing, you know, sometimes that's not going to happen, uh, especially when you are busy and all that sort of stuff. So I'm, you, need, you need to make space for yourself. But I think if you habitually set in time to create, to write, to draw every day, um, then that inspiration is going to happen. Um, yes, but hustle, squeezing all the juice out of the orange, pricing structure. It's another small thing that y'all have to think about and deal with is pricing. Um, pricing is basically it's another component of the story that you're telling about your brand and about yourself is how you price yourself. It's how you value, um, but value is also based around uh, People, people perceive value uh, by a lot of things. People just look at you and they think something. Um, that guy's obviously a surfer. That guy is totally an artist. He probably lives in Portland. Uh, you know, all these different things. Hipster, uh, go to the next one. But um, this, this, I love this quote. You're not getting paid for what you're worth. There's only two possible scenarios. Either 
people don't know what you're worth. And so it's a marketing problem. And so you need to figure out then how do you let people know what you're worth because you're extremely talented and good. And how do you actually get your brand out there so people see it and know what you're worth? Or you're not currently worth as much as you believe, uh, which means then you've got to figure out how to, you've got to go create those personal projects. You've got to figure out how to have space in your life so you can serve the clients that you want to be getting because if you don't have that, it's pointless to get those clients. Um, the next one. So here's a small story is uh, about a tor uh, turqu tortoise shop, turquoise shop. It was it's in this um, little t small town. I think it was Nantucket. It was another book I read, um, but can't remember the title of that one either. Um, <laughs> Malcolm Gladwell, uh, one of his books. Turquoise Shop, basically what happened was they, they're in this real, it's a touristy town and people are coming in and they weren't selling and the owner of the shop was going out of town and basically he wrote like a quick note to his assistant and he was trying to say like half off everything. For some reason, the way that he wrote it, it, it looked like 2X. And so the person basically doubled the pricing in the store and, and he left and then when he came back, instead of like, no, basically they sold more than they had sold the entire summer um, by having doubled the price. So nothing else changed, they just doubled their price and they sold more than they sold the entire summer. So there, there's that story of how like people perceive, if, if it's an expensive turquoise ring, people value it. If it's a cheap turquoise ring, people don't value it. If you are a cheap brand and you're just taking small jobs, that's how you're gonna be perceived. Even if you're taking on jobs, um, I mean, I'm starting another little side project with a buddy, and, and with, as we're talking about, it's like we are, even if it's jobs that we're not getting paid a ton of money for, we're still running full production. We're still gonna have a full crew because you're then perceived, even if you're, hey, listen, I can, I, I, here's what I generally charge, but I really like what you're doing. And this, this cord sort of ties into personal work. If there's a project that you really, really want to do, you say, listen, I, I, I will do it for free or I will do it for this because that's what my costs are. But listen, I really want to shoot your deal. I really want to work on your project. And then that builds into the portfolio that you're trying to build. But you need to start at a price point where, um, the, I mean, the, everyone has their own different business. But for me, I, I've always wanted to go after bigger, higher end stuff, work less, get paid more. Um, and, but then I also just, uh, I mean, that's the goal of a lot of people. But um, I think it, it's, it's also just like the type of business that I want to be dealing with, the type of caliber of planner that I want to be dealing with, the type of um, caliber of just client I want to be working with. Um, yeah, so people want what they can't have. They chase what moves away from them and they only value that which they pay for. I've, I've listened to a lot of stuff on how to price out um, like online courses because I might be coming with an online course. Uh, but, but one of the guys was saying that basically, he's like, here's the deal. I charge $2,500 for my courses. If I charge $50 for the same exact course, you're not going to value it as much as it if you um, paid $2,500 for it. It might be the same exact content. But if I charge $2,500, I know that you are going to complete that course because there's that good old saying, like, get your money's worth. People are going to actually, he's like, I'm doing you a favor because you're actually going to follow through and finish this course because you paid a lot of money for it and because you now value it. So, I mean, think about that with your brand is how are you, what story are you telling with how you're pricing and how you're dealing with clients in regards to pricing? The goals that no matter what you sell, be irreplaceable, essential. Well, no matter what the goal is, no matter what you sell, uh, is to be seen as irreplaceable, essential, and priceless. If you are all three, then you have pricing power. So that goes into how are you establishing yourself as a brand? How are you setting yourself apart? How are you different? How are you, you know, basically if you can, if you can do that stuff and you can be something that people need um, and you have to figure out what is it that people, because again, we're an incredibly, like no one needs what we do. We are, we are a superficial, thing. We create brands for people. We make pretty things. It's not a need. So how do we create need for what we do? Because everyone wants what we do. That's the thing. So what are you doing that people want? What are you not doing that people don't want? You know, uh, or what are you doing that people, don't, whatever. Um, but think about what it is that you could be doing that, that people need and want. So you are irreplaceable. Um, last one here is you can't be a me too product. Everybody. There, we are so saturated. You cannot be like somebody else. There, there's just too many products on the shelves. The shelves are too full. What can you do to set yourself apart? And, and if you haven't figured that out and if you don't feel like you are, I really challenge you to sit down and figure that out. Um, one, of, one of the uh, favorite quote from that same author, Todd Henry, 
Um, he runs a podcast called The Accidental Creative. Thank you, Sean. And um, he ends every single one of his podcasts saying, don't be a cover band. Cover bands have never changed the world. Be your own unique voice. Um, so don't be a cover band and be your own unique voice. Go figure that out. And thanks so much.